Plato and Aristotle, from, no, from Socrates to uh, Michel Foucault. This whole book is about spiritual exercises. It's focused on the Stoics. And normally we read, uh, I don't know whether you're familiar with uh, Marcus Aurelius, this great uh, king. And he uh, did a book called Meditation. And uh, more than psychoanalysts begin to read the book and conclude it. This guy suffers from all kinds of problems. He's too nervous. He may suffer from an ulcer. And uh, he cannot focus. He's anxious. And maybe he suffers from identity crisis or everything. He's, he's very old. And uh, Hardo demonstrates convincingly he's doing spiritual exercise in the tradition of the Stoics. Because one of the spiritual exercises for the Stoics to say, the next day is my last day. What should I do? You know, just imagine the next day, your last day, you've got to be nervous, right? <laughs> you want to try to accomplish a lot. And so all the problems that the psychoanalysts would discover, you know, my gosh, this uh, this uh, almost like the person's reached the end of his or her life. All these are exercises, spiritual exercises, to make you, of course, you still live, you still alive and very, uh, very vibrant next day, but you think the other day, <laughs> The, the day after that is the, is the last day. So this is, of course, the existentialist, or Nietzsche, talk about live dangerously, in, in a sense, live in a mindful way, always being alert what you do. So this is spiritual exercise. A great uh, philosopher on this campus, uh, Harry Lee Putnam, who is a mathematical uh, logician, uh, realist, he introduced that book to me, and he said, after I read this book, I know the meaning of doing philosophy. <laughs> It's not simply speculation. It's something very, very close to <coughs> your own uh, involvement. This is uh, so embodied uh, knowing. It's not only to know with your brain, with your mind, but to know with your body. And the body is not differentiated. Uh, of course, you can say it's distinct, but it's closely linked with all other area of your existence. So uh, embodied thinking necessarily involves your mind involves your soul, your spirit, everything. So when we use the term, you know, in the great learnings called self-cultivation in Chinese, meaning cultivation of your body, shosen cultivation of body. But the body is not a reductionist model. The body necessarily involves the mind, the heart, uh, emotion, and spirit. Because you just cannot think uh, without being emotionally involved. Pure thinking is not possible. Uh, this beautiful story of, uh, of Einstein, and uh, people say you suddenly got an ins inspiration. How do you feel? How do you feel? Normally, you get an inspiration, become excited. Your mind becomes clear. He said, whenever I got uh, an inspiration, my back aches. <laughs> I feel that there's something, something there. You know, it's not here. It's not hard. There's something in my, my back. So this guy was uh, totally immersed, there's no question about it. So this kind of humanism, the humanism is uh, no longer, okay, most important thing, I'm not able to say that. The, uh, it is involved with uh, the human spirit. And so humanism, in this sense, is a spiritual form of humanism, it's not secular. Uh, we have another five minutes. Let me stop here and see if you have some questions. What are, what do you have questions? No, no, what kind of questions do you have for me? And uh, if you don't say anything, then we'll be silent for the next five, five minutes. I'll even call upon you to, uh, to say something. Um, yes, this question about subjectivity. Because, yes, very important. Um, how is it, so is there anything like essential? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you are uh, Okay, um, great. I'm now everyone. This like for the ideas like gender and ethnicity, they are all sure. kind of social ideas and uh, not necessarily social. They are physiological too. Right? Right. But like I think like some postmodern philosophers would say they are sort of historically constructed. They're right, and not like right. Or culturally constructed. Right. So how do you sort of juggle between the idea of 
accept subjectivity. Sure. And, I think that's the reason I uh, basically do not follow the uh, postmodernists. Uh, I'm talking about the subjectivity, but it's not the subjectivity most of the postmodernists reject. Because what they reject is uh, the Western Cartesian, all these other philosophical constructions. So if you look at uh, what I'm talking about, like digging the well, you know, this is not even an image for the postmodernists. I happen to know, know some of them. And they do not even think. So subjectivity is associated with subjectivism or even with uh, solipsism. Solipsism meaning that you just cannot think beyond your own personal experience. But I think in this kind of thinking, you are subjective, uh, the true personal and subjective in that sense is related to something very deeply ingrained in your own being. So what I call uh, this notion about inner identity. So you have to have, uh, for example, if a postmodernist uh, comes to me and say subjectivity is a category that we have to reject, I say, of course, I know. But what is your, your personal feeling about this? The person will be very willing to express it, right? If the doesn't express it, he's no longer involved in conversation. I say this personal experience is not superficial. It's not some, something that you suddenly got from somewhere else. It's something you've been thinking for a long time, right? And you're thinking about long time, you have a core that helps you to think a long time. You, you evolved, you are changed, but yet this deep concern of yours persists. That defines, from your point of view, who you are. That to me is your subjectivity. Now, if, if that's diffused, if that's relegated to the background, you're no longer possible to be a very consistent postmodernist. You'll be very shallow postmodernists, like some of the followers, rather than the ori originators. Uh, that's a beautiful example because postmodernists use all these uh, unusual languages, right? uh, unusual expressions. So once the uh, New York Review of Books, which is a very important publication, published a brilliant, they call it a brilliant essay by a postmodernist, and they tried to say he's anonymous. People disgusted, debated, and it's brilliant. Then, I think he's either a mathematician or a physicist. He said, that's mine. I don't understand the word of it. 